chai pe charcha with dr murli bhardwaj every day evening i am sorry i am little late today lot of traffic jam in hyderabad so i was just thinking of jumping out of the car and then uh, um running and reaching the car is much faster so very bad uh, traffic i'm sorry to keep you all waiting <clears throat> harry roger sanjeet ralyani balakrishna akash rai soni and many more across the country can you please punch whether the voice is loud and clear right jipmer is a another one of the panchabhuta that you need to master the question bank so let us start at least jipmer 2017 16 15 2 into 3 six question papers plus may 2018 seven question papers we will try to finish uh, and before the forthcoming jipma yes Jamilai muscles are present in which location? I think easiest answer. They are present on the hip. In the gluteal region, you have gluteus maximus, medius minimus, obturator internus, and quadratus femoris, Jamilai superior and inferior, and tensor fascia latae is what you need to basically remember. But this is one important slide that should go into your mind. You have a pyriformis. Below that you have superior gemellus. Below that you have obturator internus. And below that inferior gemellus. Then you have obturator externus. And then finally quadratus femoris. Why is this important? The superior gemellus muscle is supplied by the narrow to the muscle below. That is narrow to obturator internus supplies the superior gemellus. Narrow to the obturator externus supplies the inferior gemellus. This is what you have to emphatically remember. Very happy to see 173 online viewers. Excellent, excellent. So, if you look at the gemelli, typically they are the lateral rotators of the thigh is what you need to remember. Once more neat PG you will get an, you are going to get a question. What is, what are the various muscles which are lateral rotators, medial rotators, flexors, extensors, everything. The muscle action is a favorite question of the examiner. Whenever there is a peritonsillar pain, why the pain refers to the ear? What is the naru mediating that referral pain is a very, very important question. It is the glossopharyngeal nerve which is leading to a referral pain whenever there is a peritonsillar abscess is what you need to basically remember. Now in this context, I like to tell you what are all the cranial nerves that lead to referred otalgia. The cranial nerve 5, cranial nerve 7, facial nerve because the corded tympanic is supplying, the glossopharyngeal, that is the 9, and the vagus 10, and the upper two cervical nerves, C2 and C3, they are all involved in leading to a referred otalgia. Some other structure in the head and neck that they are supplying get inflamed they are also supplying the ear and that is the reason there is a referred otalgia let us quickly look into each of these cranial nerves the third division of the fifth cranial nerve is called mandibular nerve if you look at the mandibular nerve it goes to trigeminal ganglion and another side one of the branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal is auriculotemporal. That is the one which is going to the ear. And the fifth cranial nerve also is giving rise to a lingual nerve, buccal nerve, 
and inferior alveolar nerve, they go and supply the anterior two third of the tongue, the palate, lower teeth, the mandible, including temporomandibular junction, and the three salivary glands. That is the reason any inflammation of these structures will lead to the development of a referred otalgia mediated by the auriculotemporal nerve to the ear is what you have to basically remember. That is the story of mandibular nerve. Then glossopharyngeal. There is a superior glossopharyngeal ganglion and through the jugular foramen, the glossopharyngeal will ultimately be reaching and sending a branch to reach the inferior petrocell ganglion and from there the pharyngeal lingual tonsillar branches of the glossopharyngeal will go and supply the portion of one third of the tongue the tonsillar fossa the inferior nasopharynx parapharyngeal space and uh, retropharyngeal space same time, glossopharyngeal is also giving rise to a branch called as the tympanic nerve of Jacobson, Jacobson's branch. That is the one which will go and supply the tympanic plexus. That is the reason any tonsillar inflammation, parapharyngeal abscess, retropharyngeal abscess, any posture one third of the tongue lesions, they lead to a referred otalgia through the Jacobson's nerve, the branch of the cranial nerve 9 to the ear is what you have to basically understand. So, what are you seeing here? This is the peritonsillar abscess, the quincy. And this pain is this patient through the Jacobson's nerve is having a referred otalgia to the ear, is what you need to remember. Ravi is saying, sir, this Jipmer will be a reasonable exam, not like Ames. Every time you will think that the second wife is more reasonable than the first wife. But later on you will discover at least first wife used to let you come inside the home when you are late. Second will not even permit you to touch the gate also. So, if you are good with your basics, any exam is a cakewalk because ultimately cranial nerves, all these topics are the favorite topics, 650 high yield topics. That's the only ultimate uh, paramartha of the life. So cranial nerve 7, let us talk about the facial nerve. Typically, you have a geniculate ganglion associated with the facial nerve. And... Through that, it will be giving rise to the median nerve, greater superficial peroneal nerve, and they will ultimately go and supply the nasal mucosa, poshethmoid sinus, sphenoid sinus, and soft palate. Same time, the seventh nerve also gives rise to the posterior auricular branch, which supplies the ear. That is the reason any sphino sphenoid sinusitis nasal mucositis or any ethmoid sinusitis or any soft palate lesions lead to the development of referred otalgia to the ear through the cranial nerve 7's posterior auricular nerve. That is what you have to basically remember. Finally comes the vagus, the cranial nerve 10. So the vagus has a superior vagal ganglion. It will be giving rise to the tympanic nerve and plexus and auricular nerve to the ear. Same time vagus passes through jugular foramen. It will be reaching the inferior vagal ganglion. What is the other name? Nodose ganglion is a vagal ganglion. Through that it will be giving rise to the internal laryngeal, superior laryngeal and the pharyngeal branch of the vagus. And uh, it supplies the supraglottic larynx and uh, laryngeal and lingual surface of epiglottis. So any laryngitis, epiglottitis, pharyngitis lead to the referred pain to the ear through the auricular nerve of the vagus is what you have to basically remember.